and welcome back. We're going to be looking at complex numbers and how we turn the standard Cartesian numbers into the polar coordinates. So here's the standard form. If you have a complex number, say z, and we have a plus bi, a is going to be the base of the triangle, and b is going to be how high it is, or low it is, depending on where you're at. Now, if we go over to the standard form into polar, we're going to need to do this. Because remember, with triangles, you can use Pythagoras, and you can use trigonometry. We're going to be using both. We're going to need to find out the length of this side, which is the r. We need that. And to do that, of course, you can do a squared plus b squared and take the square root. We can also use trigonometry, like we've learned in math D. And we're going we're gonna to be doing both, because we're going to need both parts of this to create the polar form. So I'll just get this cleaned up. All right. We're going to need a couple things. Obviously, the length r. And then we're also going to need this, v. It's the angle, but they call it argument. argument. Um, and it's funny when they abbreviate it because it looks like it's ari. <laughs> I always like that. It's the angry angle. So that's something we'll have to laugh at. Put it on a t-shirt or something. Okay, so if we are looking at the first part, here's the cosine v a divided by r. We know that from the standard rules. Here's our v right there, and that means it's going to be a divided by r right there. So when we do that, the general, and it doesn't matter where it is or what number it is, you just do it. The only time you don't get an actual triangle is if you happen to be on one of the number lines. Let's say if it was pi over 2, then you would see the axis, but it would be hard to draw a triangle. Only then is it hard to see the triangle, even if you want to perhaps think that it's there. Okay, now we have the sine. Same thing, as you remember, it's going to be b divided by r. It's just the length, and b is right there. So if it was a 4 there, you'd have a 4 there. If you had an r, you'd have an r. So let's take the next look. Okay, the normal form, here we are, the, the a plus bi. Now what have we done? We have, we're going to substitute in the r, the b, the a, and everything, and, and get this form right here. When we're done, It'll look like that. And I need to get better at drawing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Still learning this stuff. Okay. So, this will work for basically any complex number that we want. It's the standard formula. If you're given a complex number, you just plop in the numbers and the right stuff will come out. So let's, let's take a look at a, an example. We have z equals 3 plus 4i. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is draw a picture. And you have to get used to doing this. Uh, just get some graph paper or, or anything. But you got to think of a complex number as being a place. And that place will make a triangle. That triangle will have legs and sides and bases, and it'll have angles. So just uh, draw it. So I have the advantage of having prepared this, so it's ready to go. And here you can see it. And what I'm going to do is zoom in on it now. <clears throat> Makes it a little easier to see. So just like the previous uh, general example, now we're going to look at our case of r and it's the it's an actual distance it's the hypotenuse of the triangle and that's that's right there so in order to get the absolute value which is the length of r 
we just take the numbers in, in front of the real portion and the complex portion. You square it just like you would Pythagoras and then take the square root and we get the length 5. Now you can see because you're going to square it, it doesn't matter if it was negative or positive because once you square it, it's going to be positive. And the absolute value is just thought of as a length then. So r is always just going to be a length. Even if you had r over here or over here or over there, it's, and we'll pretend those are straight lines, then you would have a length, a distance from the origin. All right, so let's take our next step then. Here is the actual form when we're done, and it's all cleaned up then. We have our length. We have our radians right here, and you see that it's the same there because that's, that's what we had calculated by just taking the arc tan. And now we have a nice, clean little polar coordinate, and it... Uh, yeah, you can go back and forth. You can go, uh, I'll take in another example, another film, where we'll take a polar and convert it into the standard Cartesian. So let's take a look now at another one. We'll do example two. Now here I let the real component be negative, just so you can get practice on to the other side. Now here we have the, the minus four. And you'll see that when I use Pythagoras, I'm still going to just call it 4 and square it. Uh, and that's fine because it's, as you know, a negative squared is going to be positive anyway. So some might consider that cheating, but this is how I learned it when I was a kid. So you'll just have to deal with it. <laughs> All right. So again, I'm zooming in and now I'm leaving out some of the intermediate steps because I think you can follow it. It's just the real component squared, the imaginary component squared, put it together, take the square root. Now I'm going to leave it as the square root of 20. You could clean it up a little if you want to, but I'm, I'm fine with this. So uh, just like before, the tangent of the opposite divided by the base, and here I'm using the positive because I'm, I'm taking this part first as though it were a, just a complete independent triangle and that will give us the, the angle here inside that we're calling u and then then we'll compensate for there actually being a bit more here you see that v there and you know the the first quarter of it is going to be pi over two and then there's another portion there so you'll you'll see what we'll do shortly here is where we're going to fix that so, you know, all the way around this whole half, that's pi. So then if you have pi and you take away u, all that's left is, well, v. And v is what we're looking for because we want the, the standard polar form here. Clean her up a bit. Take the next. And here we go. Square root of 20 times the cosine of 2.98 plus sine of 2.68. And I managed to leave out the little i right there. I'll fix that in the later segment. Okay, that's all, all she wrote. Um, good luck. We'll, we'll do some on the board now.